What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Francisco. This is Stream Gear Talk. Today, I have the distinct honor and pleasure to introduce you to Wavelink 3.0. Let's go. Elgato has completely transformed Wavelink with 3.0. The Wavelink that you and I know from years past is by all accounts dead and gone, or at the very least, it is in the process of evolving into what is now Wavelink 3.0. In Wavelink 2.0, we had to deal with inputs and channels. We took an input, we assigned it to a channel, and we assigned it to one of two different submixes. With Wavelink 3.0, instead we're dealing with channels, which are our inputs, and assigning those channels to different mixes, of which there are more than two. And that'll all make sense over the course of the video. And we're going to do all of that on a very fancy schmancy mixing and routing table. So I'm very excited to show you this. I'm ready to get started, but there's two things I need to tell you before we get started. Number one, I am an Elgato partner. This is a sponsored video. This is not a product, a physical tangible product or anything that I paid money for or anything I got for free, but this is a sponsored video. I want to talk about 3.0. And so they're sponsoring me in doing so. All right, you do with that whatever you will. Number two, Wavelink 3.0 is in beta right now. So if you go download the beta version of this program, I guarantee you, you're going to have some hiccups along the way because it's in beta. The purpose of the beta is to help collect feedback from all the people that are using the beta to ensure that when Wavelink 3.0 fully launches, we don't have many, many issues, if any at all, ideally. All right. So with those two out of the way, let's get started. I'm going to have a little bit of an unorthodox order to all this. So just bear with me. Okay. One of the most common complaints that I've seen on Reddit when it comes to the release of the beta for 3.0 is the fact that microphone FX is gone. They've done away with it. And if you don't know what microphone effects is, basically when you're using Elgato Wavelink and you have your microphone set up with all those wonderful VSTs that make your voice sound mwah, angelic, you're able to send that signal as the microphone effect signal to something like, say, Discord as your main microphone signal. With 3.0, you cannot do that because that option is gone. The way to do that in 3.0 is that you have to create a mix specifically and only for your microphone. Once you add your microphone in as a channel and you create your first mix, you can name that your mic effects mix if it makes you happy. Simply assign the microphone to that mix and nothing else to it and you're good to go. That can now be your ever loving coveted mic FX signal for programs such as Discord. Okay. Now, the only reason I'm starting with that is because I needed to explain to you why there's already something on the table and how I was able to get the microphone recorded before recording the video, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. Now, when you download Wavelink 3.0 from Elgato's website and you install it, please make sure that Elgato Wavelink 2.0 or whatever other prior version you're using is uninstalled first before installing 3.0. Once you've uninstalled Wavelink, install 3.0 and you should be able to open it up and it should detect your device. One of the first screens that you'll see once your device has been detected, in my case, the Elgato Wave XLR, is this screen right here, where it's going to show you the different features of whatever device you're using. And I'm going to go ahead and, I'm going to go ahead and make a safe assumption here. that it, It'll do that if you're using an Elgato-specific device. I did it with the Elgato Wave XLR dock on my Stream Deck Plus, and it showed me how the dock works and all the different functions of it. And it also did the same thing with the Elgato Wave XLR. I cannot speak to any other audio interfaces out there that are not Elgato branded, but I'm pretty sure it's safe to say that it probably will not give you a full breakdown of the features of whatever audio interface you're using if it's not an Elgato branded one, All right? It, it pointed out things like the knob, like if you press the knob, it can do this. If you press it again, it'll change this. If you press it again, it'll do that. You have capacitive mute at the top. You have the ability to turn on phantom power, et cetera, blah, 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 et cetera. You get it, okay? Now, once you're done with that, you move on to the next screen. It's going to help you set your gain, which I think is really, really cool. It's really, really, really cool that it does that because I think a lot of people, myself included, have made several mistakes when it comes to setting your gain. It has a nice little meter and a green zone, and you just want to land somewhere in the green zone. And if you want the decibel numerical value, that's also right there for you. Okay. You do that. It'll help you set up the volume for your headphone output, as well as the balance between your PC audio and your mic monitoring, et cetera. Really fantastic. I love that, that it starts off with that. It's great. It makes things super, super easy. All right. But let's just move right into the meat and potatoes of Wavelink 3.0. Audio, mixing, and routing. And my Lord, <laughs> it is very different. So 
If we go ahead and click over here on Mixus, we're going to go back to the table that you've already seen. The first thing that I need you to understand when you're setting this up is that whatever app input you want to add here, it has to make sound first. It has to make some sort of noise. I've already done all that in preparation for recording this video, but let's just pretend that you want to add Spotify into the mix. You need to play like two seconds of a song and then it'll pop up right here for you. Okay. So I want to add my capture card, my Elgato 4KX, which is connected to my PS5, which handles all of my video and audio coming from my PlayStation 5 Pro. We're going to go ahead and hit create channel and you're going to get a drop down of all your different input devices and apps and they are categorized separately, which is a nice little touch if I may say so myself. All right. Under input devices, I see Elgato 4KX. Boom. All right. Ignore the fact that I have mic effects right now as my only mix. Okay. We're just going to add all of our apps and inputs right now. Next up, I want to go ahead and add Discord. So I just added it in right there. All right. I have to play some music real quick from Spotify. So there we go. I'll play two seconds of Spotify and bam, right there. There it is. Now we're going to go ahead and add in Google Chrome. And as far as my streams or my content is concerned, that's pretty much everything I need because at the moment, I'm only streaming Battlefield 6 on my PS5 Pro. And when I inevitably do Silk Song again later this week, I'll add in the PC audio. Okay. Great. So we have our channels, our inputs, but now we need to kind of separate them out. Who is going to hear what? Well, we're going to go all the way to the right and you see the tiny little plus sign right there. Go ahead and click that. Bam. Congratulations. You just added yourself a brand new mix. This mix right here is my microphone effects mix. Therefore, nothing else is going to go into that mix because I don't want anybody getting my mic audio to also get anything from Discord, which could result in annoying reverb, echo, etc. I don't want them to know what kind of music I'm listening to, which is definitely not K-pop Demon Hunters. All right. And I definitely don't need them hearing me on stream as I monitor my streams on my third monitor over here. We don't need that to happen. So I'm going to go ahead and add in. First of all, I'm going to rename this. We're going to rename this to the good old fashioned personal mix. Okay. We can change the icon if we want over here. And we're going to put a we're going to have smiley face. Or we're going to put this, the ominous, vague figure of a human being. And we're just going to close that out for now. So my microphone, I don't want that in my personal mix because I don't want to hear myself. My capture card, we're going to hit plus and add it. My Discord, absolutely, I need to hear that. I also want to hear my music and I want to be able to hear any sort of anything coming out of my browser. Cool. Now, obviously, if we have a personal mix, we're going to need a stream mix. So we're going to go back to the plus. We're going to click that right there. And but it's already called three mix. Wow, look at that. Amazing. This thing is like some sort of generative AI machine learning thing where it automatically knows exactly what I want to do. I'm going to just go ahead and select the icon right here. And that's the one that's been the stream icon for forever. So I'm going to leave that there and close the window. In my stream mix, I definitely need my microphone audio to be included right there. I also need my capture card. I want Discord. I don't want Spotify. Or do I? Maybe. I do. We're going to leave Spotify in there. We're going to do that. And I also want my Google Chrome browser audio to be there. Now, I added Spotify into the mix, but wouldn't you know that apparently some big top level execs have a big problem when we play music on our streams and on our content, and they don't want us to do that, right? That's a huge problem. So we're going to go ahead and hit plus again and create a new mix. And this time I'm going to call this one the VOD mix. All right. And what, what do I do for the icon here? Uh, we are going to go to the crown because why not? I don't know. That's just the first one I can think of. And that's what we're going to go with. My VOD mix needs to have my mic. It needs to have my capture card. It needs to have discord. It does not need my music and it can have my browser audio. And when you're doing this in OBS, for example, when you select your VOD track, whatever you assign your VOD mix to, as far as audio inputs concerned, you can say, hey, VOD mix is going to go to track number six. So my VOD track needs to be only track six. Congratulations. You just got your music audio removed from your VOD track. Give yourselves a round of applause. Very cool. But, they did, but it doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop there. Okay. Because right now, as you can see here in the top right corner over here, I have my Elgato Wave XLR headphones selected as my main audio listening device, right? This is my piece of hardware. This is where everything is coming to right here, right? 
But um, I noticed that number one, obviously because this is in beta, there is no Stream Deck functionality as of right now for this. So that presents one big problem for me. And that big problem being is that I use my Stream Deck to switch between putting out the audio to my headphones and putting it out to my speakers. But I can't do that here. So what in the world do I do? Huh, well, I'm gonna go back to plus again. And this time I'm gonna name this mix my edifier mix after my edifier speakers. Okay, what I wonder if they have like a cool speaker icon. Close, but no cigar, but we're gonna go with that right there. Bam, close. Okay, in my speakers, I want to get my capture card audio. I don't care for Discord because I'm not ever playing anything with Discord and routing that audio to my speakers. I definitely want my music and I'm cool with my browser audio. Awesome, fantastic. But wait a minute, Francisco, if you have your edifier mix on your fancy schmancy routing table and your output device is set to your headphones connected to your Wave XLR, how do you route that audio specifically for that one specific mix to your speakers? I'm so freaking glad you asked because all you're gonna do is you're gonna go here, edit your channel mix, and you're gonna add an output and oh my Lord, Speakers high definition audio device, close. But wait, <laughs> there's more. If you hover over any one of the mixes, you're gonna see that ear icon pop up, right? So if I want to specifically listen to just my edifier mix, which will route all the selected channels through that mix to my speakers, I simply click here. And now if I were to play some music, for example, this, I don't think you're gonna hear it because uh, voice focus is turned on. Let me turn voice focus off real quick. It's coming right through. All of the audio for the channels that I've allowed and have selected to route audio through that mix will now start to come out for my speakers. Obviously, I'm not going to select that because I didn't select my microphone and I don't want you to get a whole bunch of feedback and echo and start complaining about my audio being bad. But that's one example of how routing and mixing works now with Elgato Wavelink 3.0. So you have your channel set up and you've got your mixes set up over here. You're practically good to go. Let's dive in just a little bit deeper to see what else you can do. Obviously, if you click on the effects symbol over here on any one of your channels, you can add VST effects to them, all right? So we know that, we're good to go, okay? If you click on the edit symbol over here, you can rename it, you can add your VSTs, and you can change the icon as well. If you want to adjust the volume for each individual channel, aka input, then you have your sliders right over here. And let's pretend that I need to adjust the volume for my PS5 uh, for my stream mix so that they don't get their eardrums blown out because it's at 100%. You see how it all of a sudden highlights that rectangle in blue. As I start to move it, not only do we get a numerical representation of where the volume is, but now we also have a better visual representation as to where our volume is for that one specific channel in that one specific mix. I am honestly very, very excited to see what it is that we get once Wavelength 3.0 gets out of beta and comes out in its official full release. Because I personally think that this right here is the absolute right way to evolve and elevate the Wavelink experience. I am so glad that they went with this and not just a slightly better iteration of what we already had. There wasn't anything really wrong, in my opinion, with Wavelink 2.0, but obviously there's room for improvement almost in everything and anything in life. And I, I, I think this is fantastic. And I'm curious to see what it looks like when it's all said and done. I'm curious to see how they're gonna handle the Stream Deck integration because my Lord, I've already thought of like 20,000 different ways that that's gonna be handled, which I have, I'm not, I'm a big dumb dumb when it comes to those kinds of things. So I'm gonna leave that to the experts and trust them, but I am so excited to see what that looks like. And I'm also curious to see how people, users, you and I, are going to use this? How many mixes are you gonna have versus how many mixes am I gonna have? And who is gonna figure out the really cool stuff that you can do in Wavelink? One thing that has stood out to me that I wish was implemented now, but I'm hoping they will implement it before full release is the ability to link sources or inputs to one another. So for example, when I play and stream Battlefield 6, 
my volume for my PS5 is basically the same on my personal mix as it is on my stream mix. It's usually at about 75%. I wanna be able to link these two and change the volume from one and the other one change with it, right? Just like you can in Wavelink 2.0. Same thing goes for Discord. I wanna see that, I hope that comes back, I hope that stays here. Uh, as far as any other feedback, obviously there's some stability concerns right now because this is in beta, but they're already aware of every issue I've ever had. It's already been mentioned to them in the mega thread on subreddit. So I'm not even gonna bother regurgitating the same stuff they've already been receiving. It, it wouldn't make any sense, but yeah, I am super excited, super, super excited. So I'll be back when it comes out officially to do another video and follow up and see what we got here versus what we get then. And in the meantime, you wonderful people, you, you'll have a wonderful day. Take care of yourselves. Be good to one another. Be good to each other. Be good to yourselves. I just botched that. Be good to yourselves. Be good to one another. Peace out.